everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are going to be playing Odin vs. Soro uh, since the set list already released. So we're going to be trying a bunch of different decks from now on. Hope you enjoy the video and let's hop right into the battle. As usual, you can find the deck list in the description below. And I get to start with my Odin deck and <laughs> I reveal one done and already have to pass my turn. So no turn one plays from me here and the turn passes over to Legion. Gonna draw off a turn, have two done revealed. <laughs> Got her done upside down there. And then of course she is gonna play for her first card, gonna be the Sabaody. Gets to look up. Uh, gets to look at the top five cards of her deck. Pick one straw hat type character among them and put them into her hand. So uh, that's usually what you want to see for your first card playing Soro. It's either the Sabaody or the um, Nami. Both with very similar effects and just helps her prepare or like set up for the rest of the game. So she's going to grab the Rush Luffy. Going to be a big threat later down the line for me. Yeah, just, just gonna explain that we need to show the cards into the camera a little bit so I get to do the editing afterwards. And turn passes over to me. I'm now to three done and I realize my hand is not actually looking too good. I don't really have any of the the classic turn uh, three done plays available for the Odin deck. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm just gonna attach three and swing for 8k. So she doesn't have any blockers on the field or whatever. So gonna get some guaranteed damage in there all the way down to full life and then I'm just gonna pass over the turn so no further place for me my board is looking very empty right now which is not nice especially because um, Soro is gonna start building the board very soon so Legend is probably gonna play down some characters but first off she's just gonna swing for five and I believe I will be able to yeah I will counter that with a 1k Oh, actually, th I think that's one of my 2k counters down, so I actually have to um, use that for the 5k attack. And then she's just going to play down the chopper and the Frankie before three do uh, four dawn and pass the turn. The turn. So um, at this point, I don't. I feel like I still don't have any good um, plays I can make despite already being at three dawn. So I'm actually going to go with kind of sub optimal play here. Um, I do have another one of the easel and she can rest an opponent's character. But that's not so good. So what I'm going to try now, I believe, is I'm going to try and bait out some of her stuff here. Yeah, just going to think about how many Dawn. I'm going to attach two Dawn to my Odin. Kind of, uh, not two, maybe it's just going to be one Dawn. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to swing for 6k. And I'm just going to try to maybe bait out either her chopper or maybe counters from her hand. She's going to show me the sub for a 2000 counter, so attack not going through. Uh, which is nice, and then I will now, I believe, make a little bit of a not too good play, but I feel like I need to build somewhat of a board. And I'm also trying to bait out maybe her Frankie's attack, just so you can take him down afterwards, because he would be a big threat to all of my other characters later down the line. So I'm going to play down here is not just yet, still thinking about it. Yeah, this is such a tough turn for me. I was thinking, is it even worth playing down that? But I will do it. I'm going to play down Izo. Her on play lets me rest one of um, her characters with a cost of four or less. And of course, that's not really doing anything because at this point, I'm not able to attack anyways. And it might have been better to play her first and attack with Odin and maybe bait out at least a block from the chopper instead of the one um, counter from hand. But yeah, I'm gonna play down the Isa. <laughs> and she was like, that, that's all she does? She just rests me on play? I'm like, yeah, yeah. She was like, but I can just refresh and set him to active during my refresh phase, right? And I'm like, yeah, 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 okay, don't worry. So yeah, not a very good um, play for me there, but my hand is not looking too good. Um, not having any of my usual low cost characters that I could play. So yeah, just double checking whether or not Isa has anything other than the on-play effect. No, she does not. But yeah, my goal is maybe bait out the attack from the Frankie just because she feels like she wants to clear on my board and then be able to maybe grab a KO on Frankie afterwards. But yeah, this is already not looking good. I'm off to a pretty bad start with the Odin deck here. 
unfortunately. But um, I believe we do have some of the higher cost cards in hand that are useful in the matchup. So might be able to um, turn it back around a little bit again. So yeah, she's actually going to attach one to her Frankie. And she will swing for 5k into my easel. So yeah, Frankie, of course, with Donix one, able to attack characters directly. And I will take the damage here. So I'm going to have Izo get KO'd, which is fine. And yeah, now her Frankie is rested. She's still got the chopper there, which is kind of unfortunate. So she got the blocker available. She will swing for five. And I will take a life here. And I actually get pretty lucky here. I do get a very useful trigger. So I get the Paradise Waterfall trigger. KO one of your opponents. Rest the characters with a cost of four or less. So I do get to just straight up knock out the Frankie there. So <laughs> stars aligned there for me. I did get the really, really um, good situational trigger there. Frankie is down. And now she's left with just a chopper on board right now. But she still has five of her done open. So what she's going to do is she's going to play down the Jimbe for four and then already attach one done right away so she will be able to make use of his on block effect if i attack during my turn so um good play from her she gets the jimmy down maybe get some value out of the effect if um if possible and now that i'm all the way up to seven done here um i finally get to make some better plays here i get to play down my keenem on one of the key cards in the deck here with a good on play effect if my leader is Odin, I get to play a 9 red Scabbard's character with 3 or less. I'm going to play it on the Raizo, which I believe I drew into just this turn. So yeah, get to hit um, the board with 2 characters for a total of 9 cost, but just using 6 Dawn. And I'm going to activate my Odin leader's effect, so I get to set 2 Madon back to active for the cost of discarding 1 card. And now I will swing with 7, because I want to make sure the um, Jinbei goes down. Because I'm assuming she will block with the Jimbe. She's going to do that. He's a 5k. She gets to play the Zoro. So one red character with a cost of 2 or less. And uh, not Zoro. Uh, the Sanji. She's going to play down the Sanji. And the Jimbe is going down. So her big blocker is gone. She got the Sanji down. His chopper still there as well. And like that, I'm going to pass the turn. So already looking a little bit better for me. Um, I have to rise on the board now. A total of two characters. So I can probably make use of Raizu's. Um, draw effect. I also can make use of Kinemon's restand effect. He has an uh, when attacking effect. Um, so we might be able to see that in the next turn unless she happens to be able to um, KO one of these two right now. But she would need something like a gum gum chat pistol to make that happen. So Yeah, looking a little bit better for me here. But still a bit of an awkward spot. And she's just gonna think about what she wants to do. Also, she's just making sure she knows all the effects of my characters. And then the first thing she's gonna do is she's gonna swing for five into my life. I'll actually take that, not playing any counters, take the life to hand there, all the way down to three life already. Yeah, I forgot about the turn counter there, just make sure that's flipped over. So we're on turn four. And she's gonna play then the Robin for three. So that's already very scary. Could um, KO some of my low low power characters. I don't have any on the board right now though, so not too afraid of it now. But there's the Brook. So that's a really good like combo. Brook and Robin. So Brook will be able to lower the power off two of my characters and then Robin might be able to KO one of those characters because they might or might not be below 3000 power at that point. So very strong card combo combination there. And that board is looking very scary by now. So she got the Sanji on board, the Robin, the Brook. And still a blocker with chopper. So kind of getting outpaced here in terms of building the board, which is very unfortunate. But Odan deck has a lot of restand effects, so you don't need too many characters. You can get many attacks with just a few that you have. So first things first, I'm just going to attach one down to Odan, just so um, when I choose to attack with him later, I will be able to make use of his effect. And of course, also, I will probably try and attach some Dawn to my Rhizo. Because right now he's just sitting at 4k power. I want him to be at least um, 5k. So I can have the potential of dealing some damage to her leader. So I'm going to attach 2. Putting him up to 6k. Will attack. When attacking does not um, trigger yet. Because I still only have one rested character. 
She will take the damage here, so one life down. She's at three life now. Now I'm gonna attack with the Kinemon, so Don X1 when attacking triggers. Get to set my Raizu back to active here. Just gonna put a little marker there to know that um, I already used his once per turn effect, so cannot use it multiple times. Gonna be a 7k swing that she will block with her chopper. So that's down, and I believe my next curse of action should be attacking with the Raizu again to get the card draw, and then kind of take it from there. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pay three Dawn here. Play what I'm gonna play here. Yeah, I will play the Izo actually, right? So I get to rest one of her characters that cost four or less. I choose to uh, to um, rest the Brook and attack him with the Rizo. Um, get to draw a card thanks to when attacking. And I believe I choose the Brook there because I'm still more afraid of the Dawn minus two K on uh, not Dawn minus two K on uh, of the minus two K power. Because she would be able to lower the power of my Kinemon, soften that up, and then maybe KO it with one of her lower attack, lower power characters. So yeah, I felt that was a higher priority than Robin. So get to KO that with my second Rise of Attack. Then I'm gonna use one, play my Momonosuke, pay another Dawn, and then rest him to activate his effect, which is very similar to the Bunny effect from the starter deck, from the green starter deck. Just that he searches for um, Vano Kuni cards instead of Supernovas. It's gonna be Wano Country. And I go for a Komurasaki. Just because maybe later down the line I want to use her restand effect. Or um, worst case, she's just gonna be a 1k counter that's in my hand. So gonna pick that. And then I still have one done open. I will activate my Odin's effect again. Trash one Wano Country type card. Gonna be the um, the cat wiper. Get my two active Dawn, and now I will attach two of those to Odin again and swing for 7k. It's just to chip away the life a little bit there. She's going to be down to two life. So there's that, and now I will pass my turn. So all in all, um, pretty good turn for me. I got rid of her chopper, got rid of her brook, and also made sure to uh, bring it down to two life. So pretty satisfied how that turn turned out. Of course, my characters are rested now, so um, my Momonosuke is an easy target, but she could also try and go for the Kinemon, the Raizo, and of course the Izo is going to be a target for the Robin effect, so not feeling too confident still. And she's going to start to turn off just with a Nami, so gets to search her top 5 cards for any Straw Hat type card, not just characters, any card. So um, stronger effect than the Sabodi. Gets to also pick events if she wants to. For example, if she sees a Sabody, she could take that, dig a little bit deeper. But yeah, at this point, she's probably also a little bit afraid of um, losing too much life. She's already down all the way to two. So um, no blockers on field right now. Getting a little bit scary. I have a very wide board that she can deal with, of course, this turn, but. Uh, she's gonna play it a little bit safe and gonna go for the chopper in the five years. So maybe she didn't have any other good options, or she just wanted to have um, a blocker available just to give her a little bit more breathing room. Of course, I have a lot of um, rest effects in the Odin deck, so having just one blocker could still be a little bit scary. But at this point, still um, probably good off the Nami. So yeah, she's just gonna double check my effects here on the field, what everything does. Also, what kind of card she could KO, all that kind of stuff. So just going over the turn in her head here, just making sure she doesn't mess up anything. Gonna attach the one Dawn to her Soro. Gonna get the plus 1k to everybody thanks to that. Yeah, she's just going to put the mark on the Nami just so she remembers she cannot attack with that. This turn, she just played it down. And first off, she's going to start off with a 5k attack into... Uh, a 6k attack, actually, into the Raizu. Of course, the when attacking effect, going to target down the Izo. And 6k against 4k for the Raizu there. And yeah, I believe... I'm just thinking, uh, I believe I have a counter event in hand, but... Just thinking about the sequencing here for this turn. 
I could try and save the Rhizo here. Maybe with um, a Paradise Waterfall plus a 1k counter. But at the same time, she could just go after him with another character. So for now, I'm going to let him go down. He still has at least um, a possible two attacks available this turn. So I'd rather save the counter event to maybe help out my Kinium on. They're still thinking about her targeting here. And I believe um, this is going to look a little bit weird on the screen because um, she will be pointing... I'm just going to spoil this for now. She, yeah, she's going to declare attack with Sora and she will be pointing to my Momonosuke because of her she's like, oh, I want to target that. But I, I listened to the recording and she was like, wait, 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 never mind. I, I want to actually attack your leader. That's why she taps her leader card. So she's not attacking my Momonosuke. She's actually attacking my Odin leader with the 6k. And that, of course, allows me to play down the Paradise Waterfall. So I'm going to give plus 2k to my leader. Gonna tap my leader with the card. I'm gonna show it to her. And it also allows me to um, set one of my rested characters to active. And it will actually set my Momonosuke to active because that means he, she will now not be able to attack him anymore this turn with the Sanji. And that keeps him safe until my next turn, most likely. So I will be able to search for another card. But there is also the Luffy with 7k. Straight out the gate, she's going to attach it down. It's going to be 8k total now, and that will actually take care of my Kinemon, unless I have a lot of counters in hand, but I will choose not to protect him. So my other option would have been to just ignore the Momonosuke and maybe give the counter effect to the Kinemon to set him to active, but I completely forgot about the Luffy being in her hand, so I didn't think she would be able to get another attack off on the Kinemon, because I thought she would not um, commit her Sanji minus one life to just carrying a Kinemon. But yeah, good play from her. Surprised me there. She will play down a chopper with her last um, remaining Dawn. So she now got a full board with a blocker as well. So things are looking pretty scary. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to search the top five cards here with Momonosuke. Again, for a Mount of Country type card. Going to see if there's anything that could potentially help me out on this turn. And I will actually be picking up the Inadashi, the Dark Storm. Um, because I believe he is gonna be my only or probably my best target for my second Kinemon in my hand. Which I'm gonna play down right now. So again on play, get to play a cost three or less um nine red scabbards card, which is gonna be the Dark Storm. So again, putting two characters on the board for a total of six done. And yeah, still staring down a very wide board. Of course, she um, forgot to remove the markers. This is only in effect during her own turn. So it's sort of later effect is your turn only. And now I'm thinking, well, I probably have to deal with this board somehow. Because otherwise, um, I will have a pretty bad time on the following turn. So yeah, going to be pretty difficult though to um, actually do any meaningful clearing. I only have the Odin to attack with this turn. It's since I played the other two characters this turn, Momonosuke is sitting at zero power. So yeah, that's not going to be um, very easy for me to do. So yeah, just thinking about my, my sequencing here, if there's anything I can do to help me clear the board. Um, I guess the most annoying would be something like the Robin, but I will actually target the Robin with a straight 5k attack. No attachments, nothing. She still has the chopper available as well. Gotta think about whether or not she wants to save that Robin. They're just thinking very hard about it. Is it worth saving the character? Does she let her get down? She's, so she has the chopper available for a blocker at some other time. So yeah, pretty important decision for her to make here. And she will actually show me the Usup. So she had another 2k counter in hand, so that's going to be an easy counter for her. Putting the Robin at 6k, so the 5k will not be able to KO her. And that kind of messes with my plans. I don't even get to get rid of uh, get to get rid of the chopper here. 
uh, gonna be pretty awkward. And also, I believe I um, kind of messed up my dunk calculations here. I could have maybe attacked with um, some Don attached to him, but I will now again activate my Odin leader effect. Gonna put me all the way up to five Don. Discard another card. It's gonna be the Babenna discard, uh, discard here. And yeah, I do actually take it back there. So I was like, wait, this makes no sense. Why would I be um, acti uh, setting any of my Dawn to active? And it don't actually have any further plays this turn. So I'm going to pass over my turn. So yeah, I did a little bit of a miscalculation there with the available Dawn. I'm not sure what I was trying to play down there. But yeah, nothing really I can do on the remaining of my turn. So now we'll pass over to her sixth turn. She got a full board. With a lot of strong characters, so there's the Luffy, the Robin, the Sanji, the Nami is also um, a 3k attacker after activating the Sora Leader effect, so... <laughs> um, at this point, she's probably gonna think about whether or not she can just straight up win the game. I'm still at 3 life, but I have no blockers. I have very little hand cards, and she of course is gonna um, activate her Sora's Leader effect. Did a little skip there because she was taking um, quite a long time just to figure out the turn and whether or not she wants to go all in on me. And I believe she realized that she does have the resources. So she's just gonna um, distribute her Dawn here just to figure out what she's gonna do. She's not gonna like commit the Dawn yet. She's just gonna you know, spread it out in the field and see where she would be putting Dawn and how much power she ends up with on everything. How many dons there are left, all that kind of stuff. Because she could still have rush characters in her hand as well, like the Sorrow, like another Luffy. Um, she has the option of activating Sanji's effect, which also recycles two rested dons. So if she chooses to play a rush character, for example, the Rush Sorrow for, for three, she could use those dot two of those dons, attach it to Sanji. All that kind of stuff. So she has a ton of attackers. <laughs> of course, she's going to start off with the Robin with a 7k. She is going to try to get down my Momonosuke with her effect, and I will take the first life. Gonna be down to 2 now. She is going to attack with 7k using her Luffy. And I'm just thinking what my counter timings are going to be, but no dice. I'm just going to take another life damage here. I'm all the way down to 1. She's going to swing for 7 again, and now finally I'll be able to counter that. So I'm going to commit 3k in counters to save myself here. But she still has the Nami, still has the Sanji, so still not looking too good for me. She's going to swing for 6k. I do have to take the damage here all the way down to no life left. She still has the Sanji. But instead of attacking with the stand, she straight away, she's just going to play it on Zoro. And attack with that instead for the 6k. And if that doesn't work out, she will have the Sanji available. But... I will not be able to counter that. That's going to be the game. I'm going to put the Soro here at 60 million berries bounty. A little <laughs> new thing that we're going to do for our videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, um, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.